Welcome to the Broken Sun. risky position when this plan begins you have made it to the entrance of this party it is mandatory that you be in the sim at this point as you approach the scanners you see that they are lined with guards the guards all look the same because the avatars for all law enforcement officers are identical they just have different numbers across the blank visors of their helmet and those numbers are how you tell one from the other um so that's like the hull patrol and in this case uh actually it would be Thetacom because they're the private security force. So you'd see Hull Patrol walking around and Theta Com is here uh, guarding this area. And of course, there are some poor section blue folks who don't get to go into the party who are manning the scanner as well. All of the law enforcement bigwigs are here, which means all the levels of law enforcement are at this party, which is why this is a particularly daring plan, perhaps. Uh, you get up to the scanner, and as you are attempting to hack into it, what makes this situation risky is that uh, you see, just beyond the archway, a person that you don't really want to see at this time. Yolo Swaggins. Why would you not want to see Yolo Swaggins? Because I'd be very confused if he were in a police convention. <laughs> Mike has a point. The person you see is, in fact, General Griefer himself. Oh, God. General Griefer is milling Hello. about, glad-handing people. He's, you know, chuckling at jokes that may or may not actually be worth a chuckle. He's an imposing figure he's wearing a military uniform he is well we we know all about general griefer right his military uniform which is uh you know standard urban colors gray black red uh he has got let's see here uh general griefer is from where right general grievance so he's got his posse of cronies with him the general group as they are known the general grievance yeah so he's here and that's what makes the situation risky because uh he at least knows Augustus by face and shape and avatar and so on and so forth. So you are running against the clock to try and get in there and get past Griefer. So not only do you have to deal with the scanner itself, but you're going to need to find some way to avoid Griefer's notice, whether it's through your fabulous costumes or some other method of deception or escape. Who is dealing with these scanners? That'd be me. Okay. Our hack child. The scanner is a large golden arch. Uh, no, sorry. This is a high-end event. A large platinum arch. Oh. Yes. And at the top of the arch, there is a number, and that is the amount of capital that you would need to get through this arch. So the arch has inscribed atop it uh, an obscene number that most people will never see in a lifetime. Excellent. So the law enforcement officers who are in this party, most of them are being sponsored by corporations who give them nice clothes to wear so that they can afford to attend their own ball in exchange for the exposure that they get, yeah. you know, all over the web and on and on the TV and streaming situation for yeah. the whole what are you wearing stuff that goes on. I was, I was going to say that, I mean, cops, well, they do get paid a good wage. It's not that good no this is a case of you know the the quid pro quo kind of thing going on mm -hmm. you take care of us we'll take care of you well, all right as, slip yes as we approach we're probably second or third uh, party in line at this point we've taken notice of the general grievances presence <laughs> And um, it's at this point while while people are passing through I want to reach in to the the under layers of the simulation that I can tap into um, using my bizarre mind powers and pulling down my my lovely Augustus sun hat so no one can see my freaky eyes. <laughs> I want to trick the arch to read us as the the is it individual or party um, that passes through individual. Okay, so yeah, I want to as soon as um, the first of us is about to step through, presumably Augustus, um, I'm going to start the the running the spoof and focusing on holding it as, as long as it takes to get the three of us through. Okay. So you're using your attune for this? I would certainly hope so. All right. 
you attune into the sim and try to do weird stuff to it. So I would say this would normally be risky and standard effect. It is difficult for you to focus with that bruised clavicle. So it would be limited effect because you're at less effect due to your harm. Anything you want to do to about that? Or does anyone want to assist in this to make it a little bit easier? With your powers uh, combined. You could do a setup action or an assist. I can assist. Cool. Okay. Yeah. What's that going to look like? With your uh, I think I'll do that very like... How do I say it? Like very intrusive uh, rich folk greeting where like even to just, you know, the regular guards meaning the thing, uh, Augustus will, you know, clasp uh, their single hand in both of theirs and just remind them and, you know, list their qualifications. Okay. <clears throat> so um, take yourself a stress for assisting. And are you going to use that for an extra die or extra effect slip? I'll take that for the extra effect. Okay, so Augustus is uh, running their mouth to distract the operators while you do this. So let's roll risky standard, a tune five. Baby crit. Indeed. So five with five. your five, you are able to set this up. It happens. You're able to fool the scanner. You're able to twist it so that it reads each one of you individually as having uh, met the threshold of capital. As you go through, there's like a, it's not the, it's not the Zelda, you did a, you did a puzzle correct sound, uh, but it's not not that as you go through, as if having that much capital on you is an achievement that you have won. Uh, it makes a little fun little flourish of sound each time you walk through and the arch lights up uh, briefly to celebrate your arrival, rich person. I, w I was thinking one of the positive sound effects of like when you, level up in chrono trigger because that's a nice short one just yeah, almost mm -hmm. okay I, i'm sure it added like three four to three zeros at the end of the value of what we have <laughs> so i have ticked a clock as a consequence of that partial success can't imagine what that might be we got some clocks we got clocks in this game <laughs> Yeah, i've ticked a clock you have not drawn the attention of general grief uh general griefer just yet but there there are I have two clocks running at the moment. One of them has been ticked. The other has not. You can see them in the bottom there below the Augustus one. You're into the party. You hear them playing uh, classical music of the style that you would be used to hearing at uh, this type of event. What classical music might they be playing? Uh, you know, Luke Combs, Sam Hunt, maybe some Kenny Chesney. Oh. Yeah, real classic uh, country music. Uh, mm. playing in the background uh, people looking fancy there are hors d'oeuvres circulating everything looks gilded it's a tall room that you enter it's a ballroom it's a tall ballroom it's got arches there's gilding everything's in platinum and precious jewels it looks ludicrously expensive everywhere you go the floor itself has a combination it's a checkerboard pattern in the floor uh, so the alternating ones are it looks like more uh, platinum. And then every other one is some type of crystal that lets you see through to below. And uh, below this, there is a pool. And in the pool, there are simulated sea creatures swimming around. So like whale sharks, dolphins, things like that. Each one of them has a uh, like a, a corporate branding on the side of it. You can see the logo has been yep, there we go. worked into the patterns of, wow. their, uh, of their body. Yeah, there's a big chandelier. The chandelier is suspended from nothing, as far as you can tell. It looks like it's just a big floating UFO made of filigree. And uh, it is being orbited by a variety of glowing crystals and things like that. Above that, the sky looks like stars. It's like the universe is laid out above it. You can see the swirl of, uh, you know, the Milky Way's arm and so on. It's really ostentatious beautiful in a way if you can look past how much how much accumulated wealth this represents that could be used for anything else but this is like looking at it it's like nouveau riche sort of yeah this is new uh, money yeah this isn't this isn't tasteful yeah but it, parts of it are really nice but it just the the elements clash yeah, in a yeah. sort of unsettling way so yes, you are in here. There are people who are already beginning to mill about. There is the large dance floor with the checkerboard tiles in the middle. And around the edges, there's buffet stuff. Beyond that, there's seating that has a little bit more privacy to it. Lots of tables. You have a table with the tickets that you have procured uh, in this room. You can look around the room. You see people dressed 
in just imagine any given Met Gala. It's that kind of look. I see. Yeah. Uh, um, Excess. I, I really wanted to talk about what everyone in our party is wearing, I guess. I want to talk about that, too. So <laughs> as you enter the room, this isn't the kind of party where you get announced, but you enter the room and there's a few stairs that you have to walk down to get from the entrance into the ballroom. And as you walk down this, there are uh, mirrors that are sort of suspended around so you can subtly check to make sure that you look good, but also so that it reflects your brilliance uh, at you and the people with you so that it's, uh, you know, sort of an overwhelming amount of yourself. And you're walking down these stairs. What do each of you see as you walk down the stairs? Tell us about your outfit and your mask for the night. Well, who'd like to go first? So before we start, I did have one question. Mm -hmm. Given that some of us are, you know, don't have the best associations with these kind of folks, are we all going as ourselves or are we like, you know, in, in like alternate identities on top of disguises? I am not going as slip. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm assuming alternate identities. Yeah. It's an alternate identity. I had planned that. Okay. Let's just go around. Augustus, you begin. Uh, so Augustus is under the guise of one of their like many shell corporations. This is uh, their, you know, kind of munitions venue called Ursa Major, and they are disguised as uh, Ivana Zhivago. Mm, of course. Ivana and they're wearing, uh, for those of you that may play Smite, it's like the Red Star costume for Athena. It's this very like red velvet A uh, with like fur trimming, and her masquerade is like the top domino. No, so it's like a regular domino masquerade, but then the bottom half is like the lower jaw of a bear. Oh, interesting. Yo, that's sick. Do they, do they have the uh, do they have the hair going on with that? What is it? A victory roll in the front? That I'm seeing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. Ooh. And uh, they went ahead and dyed uh, their hair blonde for this. Of course. Ooh. Okay. Thank you. You're drawing a few looks as you make your way down the stairs. What is CD wearing? Um. Well, CD had kind of shown a couple different outfits. That like the first outfit they tried uh, to show to augustus because augustus would have the better eye for this it was like uh like midriff shirt with like some nice pants but sneakers and for some reason like a baseball cap and like something someone like normal would wear to a party not like this sort of party it was it was just like odd the t-shirt did say cool dude on it though mm. but yeah, but um, that was that was nixed pretty quickly. You think so? <laughs> well, what if what would Augustus have said about that? Augustus just resisted every urge to dress you up like a little plague doctor. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fancy enough. Um, the next outfit CD tried, but um, it didn't like it didn't like work for them. Was like this blue suit with like this ruffly ascot shirt thing going on with um, this killer eyeshadow. Mm. But um, it was a little too 80s. Uh, a little and bit then too 80s? A little bit too 80s. 1980s. <laughs> um, and then what CD ended up with, uh, CD is wearing um, a medieval sort of outfit, but it's like this red silk and brocade um, outfit. Like, oh gosh, how do I describe this? The what age? I don't know. I'm, try I'm trying to figure this out. I believe it's Jacobean stuff. Style or or somewhat more Renaissance. Uh, some, imagine something closer to a Renaissance festival, Elizabethan sort of style. So there are the very poofy sleeves, the very trim, close to the like waist, trim waist doublet, the poofy pants that don't go lower than the knee, and then the white silk tights. Oh, you got those pantaloons. Yes, pantaloons, but there are a lot of ruffles and there are bows, big red bows on the side of the pants. Uh and they're but the but the sleeves are very poofy. Um I will say that there is gold embroidery on the brocade parts of the outfit and this long red cape, red hood. Um but what's odd uh, like besides the fact that CD is obviously wearing this weird medieval outfit I mean, uh, they are wearing this 
big kind of cavalier hat with big red ostrich plumes sticking out of it. But the odd part, like, it's not odd that CD's wearing an over-the-top outfit exactly, but the odd part is that CD is not like a jackal. Mm. CD's avatar is human. Oh dear. And it is covered up with a mask, but you can see um, it's a half mask and you can see the bottom of the face with like wearing this black lipstick or black ish. But um, the mask is surprise, surprise, a skull mask. Mm. Um, and it is covered in holographic glitter. So it, it, it is very shiny and pretty, but uh, like a gold holographic glitter. But it, it's a bit weird for y'all to see CD being human. For sure. All right. And that brings us to Slip. The persona I've assumed is David Rogers, known um, hunting aficionado in the simulation and mm. lover of sports equipment, owner of Davids and Davids. <laughs> I am. Oh, yes. Sorry. I just, I'll tell you guys, uh, CDs, uh, alias when you're done. Sorry. Sure. No problem. Um, dressed in like a, not sure precisely what I'm thinking of, but it's like a, um, like a more stereotypical pilgrims outfit. Mm. And like, I think the finery comes in from like the, the brass or gold buttons and the buckles and whatnot. And I'm not wearing the a pilgrims hat, but I'm, I've got my hair actually clean and combed. Wow. And it's falling straight um, across my shoulders and down my back. And I'm just wearing a full face mask that looks like it's porcelain and it's featureless. Oh, okay. Interesting. And they got a little Cobra Commander today. Yep. Feeling a little Cobra. Okay. Okay. Uh, so CD's alias is Pluto Morse. Um, as long as it's not Pluto Nash. No, Morse. <laughs> I want to make a quick retcon because I just found uh, my design that I scribbled on a note, the coffee stain note on my desk. The top half of the mask isn't a classic masquerade. It's basically like the top half of the Doctor Doom mask. Okay. okay. Excellent. Very Fantastic. nice. Much better look. And and just so people are aware, CD is dressed up as the Red Death. Yeah, good. <laughs> you are in this fancy ass party now. You're all looking very fly yourselves. It's general millery right now. People are milling about, shaking hands. <laughs> I thought that was exchanging. another character. <laughs> general millery. <laughs> at your service. There is a general millery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there has to be now. <laughs> yeah, there's general millery somewhere around. Whether they're here or not, I don't know. But yes, lots and lots of people are here. Uh, majority of them are law enforcement, but there's also lots of just Rich people, corporate faces, people who are independently wealthy, with air quotes, all that stuff. Obviously, General Griefer is the big uh, military celebrity who's here to make the military presence known in their support of the law enforcement. Lots of stuff going on here. What do you do? I need to snack table. (laughs) There's very nice snack tables, but for the most part, it's it's people circulating with uh, with small bits of of food and drinks. I almost said Kiki. That is my cat. My cat, my cat could be at this party. She's a very glamorous glamour puss, but uh, oh, this is vamping. This is what vamping sounds like. <laughs> I I almost want to try to do a Skeletor voice for this section, <laughs> but I don't think I could do it. I don't know. Just oh. absolutely scream. Basically, just scream. Huh? <laughs> Definitely, nah, rich man. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> nah. There it is. Well, everyone, we should go. <laughs> I can't. You're trying to do Skeletor voice. Is that the action that you do at the party? Yep. Well, I was just thinking. I was thinking that CD would try to disguise their voice. Okay. So CD today stands for Skeletor. That's true. Those are both the letters that are in that name. All two of them. Now this is a cool party, but don't forget you do have a job you're doing. Right. CD has already eaten three snails. Oh my! The snails. I think Slip would take to the perimeter and lis- attempt to listen into the chatter of the attending guard. Okay, what type of action would you think that is? Um, because I'm not actively engaging and I'm just perusing, I think it might be Skulk. That sounds good to me. Now, you're still in a risky situation, but overhearing something would be, let's say, you're, you're listening for specific information. The chances of it being information you want is probably limited in this case if you're just 
listening to some guards. So you can do a risky limited skulk. Give it a shot. That is another three, my friends. You're welcome. Okay, good. Par. Par for the course. Par. I'm just going to roll a d6 to see if three is the number that I get. Okay, no, it's disproven my theory. <laughs> it, was, it was four. It's pretty close, though. It's close. We've got a one margin of error. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to take a clock here. Yep. You and your clocks and taking them and giving me consequences for my actions. It makes me think of either the beginning of Back to the Future Part 1 or the time machine. Mm. They both start with ticking clocks. They do indeed. Uh, You overhear the guards talking. The guards are talking about a variety of different things. So they're chatting about a variety of different things, like um, simulated weather in their home areas. Uh, They're talking about... (laughs) Of course. One of them recently broke up with their uh, with their boyfriend, and they're talking about why that oh. was. You know, he just he didn't respect the badge enough. You know, I'm out oh, there risking my life boy. day in and day out. This person is a guard, not even a police officer. Oh boy! So they're talking about their security their security guard badge, risking my life day in and day out, and he just didn't respect that. You know, the job has to come first, no matter what, and blah blah blah, that kind of thing. Okay, Paul Blart. Always complained I spent too much time in the garage working on my Segway. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the person with whom he's talking, uh, the other guard, she says, yeah, I know if, uh, if this weren't such an important job tonight, you know, I probably would be back home with, you know, my partner, but I can understand why you'd want to put the job first, especially if you're looking to advance up the ranks more. But, you know, when they put out a red flag job like this, we do have to make sure it comes first. There we go, boys. I'm just thinking about how sad and lonely and depressed CD is. I, I coyly limp back to the snack table. CD has now eaten six snails. Delicious. I feel like CD is the kind of person that just puts salt into the shell and slurps it like an oyster. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually possible. You need you need a fork. You have like a special like little fork for them. Yeah, you got to dig in there. But. CD has put it on the fork and then sl- slurps it off the fork like <laughs> delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. You notice that the uh, sensations here are heightened <sighs> HD, basically. There we go. Like they're higher quality sensations than you would get in most other areas of the sim. Everything looks better, tastes better, feels better here. CD can really taste that great garlic sauce. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. They've been perfectly prepared, these escargot. All right. So I've heard that it's a red flag operation. I'm not sure what that means for Thetacom, but something important is happening. I'm not sure if it's the cheese we're looking for. Have you seen some cheese? I want to try some cheese here. Other end of the table. Ooh, CD goes over there and stops and says, I just got a weird shiver up my spine and then goes back to getting the cheese. <laughs> but pointedly ignores the goat cheese because they don't like it. <sighs> well, dropping, now we know dropping. for sure that, that CD isn't secretly Keva all along. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. true. <laughs> We know the fans have been out there with their theories. <laughs> no, they are. The they one are. person who ever talks about our show. Listen, there's at, least, there's at least two people. True. Yeah, shout out. Shout out to you. Yeah. Specifically you. You know who you are. Yeah, you know. All right. Mwah. Are you just going to hang Aww. out at this party? Yeah, we're, just not, we're, we're not doing it, Matt. We're just going to keep reminding you that you have a job. So I'm thinking, I don't know what red flag means, but I'd like to go somewhere off limits. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I, I was, I was, uh, I forgot I had this wallet with these audio recordings in it. <laughs> Did you go get the cheese and then come back? It's like yes. a holiday greeting card. I will note that when CD goes to the other end of the table to get cheese, Ivana will turn to Roger and be like, I bet you three cred that she sticks toothpick vertically in their mouth. I don't have three cred. I'll give you a sandwich and I pick up a sandwich from the appetizer table. <laughs> One of the other guests, when you say, I don't have three cred, turns to give you a look. And I start laughing. (laughs) (laughs) Do you do that like that Kitty Foreman nervous laugh? (laughs) I'm back. Listen to these recordings I found. And it is is a baby recording. Just just baby noises. Nothing that you could say or do will surprise me at this point. (laughs) There you go, Arp. Now you don't have to edit them out. Oh, good. Thanks. They're diegetic now. (laughs) Would I know who... I guess the head of, you know, security is like maybe whomever for Section Blue is like specifically in charge of. 
security? Um, let's see. Would you know the head of Section Blue? Um, I don't think anyone outside of Section Blue knows who's actually the head of Section Blue. Or I guess just somebody important from Section Blue. It's Whiskey Tango. Yeah, Whiskey Tango. Section yeah. Blue is, aside from Whiskey Tango, like, people don't know Section Blue agents. That is fair. Wait, would CD know of any since they got taken in by Whiskey Tango at one time? No, Whiskey Tango took you to the to the police station. Okay. Not the Section Blue headquarters. Quick question. Did... CD ever get Whiskey Tango's autograph when they got arrested? I don't know. I mean, you could do a flashback at some point if that's important to you. Because CD, even though they would hate them for or him for uh, arresting them, would still might ask if they were well known enough. CD does like their autographs. So true. I think I will head over and speak to Whiskey Tango. Have you seen Whiskey Tango? I conjure him. <laughs> CD got a one, which means that CD does have uh, his autograph. Okay. Okay. So your your goal is to find Whiskey Tango, Augustus? Yes. Okay. Uh, so that's probably going to be an action roll to see if you can find them in all this mass of people. What type of action do you think you want to do for that? Ask for their autograph. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Maybe consort. I think, you know... Augustus tries to be when pretty. You, when you turn coat, it's like, yeah, it slips over there. I, I think Augustus tries to stay on the sidelines a bit and not make uh, their presence in events too pronounced. Right. But they are currently playing a, playing a character, and Ivana is a very abrasive person. So uh, she's very likely to just march up to somebody and be like, hey, point me to X. Okay, give it a try. You're still in a risky position. I would say asking around about this would be standard effects. That's a success. It is a four. Yeah, you've succeeded. Okay, I'm going to tick this clock one more time. It's bizarre that you would do that. Yeah. You're cruel. The clock is full. All right, so good news, bad news. Uh, Good news, you go up and you ask somebody where Whiskey Tango is, and the person sort of glances up at you and glances around. Oh, yes, the golden boy. Uh, And they gesture. And he's got me in handcuffs. In a direction. Uh, And meanwhile, the dance is beginning. Oh, God. Yes, indeed. When you come to the law enforcement ball, mass grade ball, part of the e- <laughs> a, big part, a big part of the evening. Part of it is that you have to carry an infant with you to keep the BTs yeah. away. Well, C- CD does have that baby. We're not going to put Leon. In the, we're not going to put Lawrence in the chest cavity. All right. Fine. Oh, no, that's what I wasn't saying. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't have that anymore. Oh, right. Um, okay. So part of it is that when you go in, you are going to be involved in this large, elaborate dance. It's a big choreographed thing. And, you know, the instructions are on the invitation. You're expected to learn the steps of the dance before you go. Oh, obviously. So you can be part of this display. Of course. What What does CD's partner look like? We'll find out soon. Good. So as you are all ushered onto the floor, people are choosing their initial partners. And on the one side of the floor, the person is gesturing, oh, Whiskey Tango, the golden boy. Why, I see him right over there. And slip, a hand lands on your shoulder. Oh, let's do it. Citizen. Could it be? May I have this dance? I didn't know I shipped it until right this second. Oh, don't ship it. He doesn't have a Zuko redemption arc coming. I don't think so. No. Whiskey Tango. Just in this one moment. I is uh, standing there on the dance floor as you are ushered onto it. He is wearing. Tell me about it. A Yeah, I will. All right, let's start <laughs> with his mask. <laughs> So his mask is the section blue badge, but done up as a rising sun over the top half of his face. So it's the the whole crest of the section blue. It's got his officer badge, but blown up in size and with like sun rays coming out of the top. It's in gold. Um, his whole outfit is gold and red. He is wearing a cape. Uh, it's a half cape. So it like goes down to his his waist. The outside is this sparkling golden like not sequins because those would be cheap but it's like uh, sparkling segments of gold scale almost and uh, on the inside is a rich red fabric probably something like i don't know silk and if you look closely at each of the scales he's he's wearing what looks like some type of knight's armor scale armor very fancy but with with the gold and if you look closely which you kind of have to because he's standing right in front of you now that is true. Each little scale is in the shape of his officer's badge with the full engraving on it down to that level. <sighs> so there are millions of these little scales, millions of repetitions of this little officer's badge. 
That's what he's wearing. Either Zap Brannigan, does he also pronounce champagne champagne? He does not. He does not. He drink objectively, champagne. objectively, he looks good. I hate him. Like, this is one of those situations where you know he is a bad person. This is a, accepted. But people looking at pictures of him on Twitter are still like, yeah, but he's hot though, right? Yeah, I'm like, that's just big. Yeah, it's, it's exactly that. Those distressing threads on Twitter where they're like, you know who's hot? This serial killer. It's like, damn, you're right. <laughs> I would like to state that it is canon that uh, Sun Twitter is the Sunbeam, and whenever you post, yeah. you're sent, you're posting beams. <laughs> yeah, posting so, beams, I'm sending out beams <laughs> right now, man. I'm busy. That's so great. Hold on a second. If this is a masquerade ball, is there anyone dressed up as Gumboy? No, it's not that, that kind of masquerade ball. Be in. Dang it! <laughs> I no Gumboys that you can see. Hardly accept the dance. Okay, you begin the steps of the dance. Well, I mean, you go to your positions <laughs> with him. Let's see. Who does who is CD dancing with? Tell us about CD's partner. Oh, I have to come up with it. Hmm. Crocodile. <laughs> uh, trying to think. I don't even know what sort of being CD would find attractive. It's, you might have just been paired up by ticket as well. Okay. It could be anyone. Maybe it's someone you know. Maybe it's not someone you know. I know. Maybe. And in fact, if you don't know, then I know who it is. Okay, who is it? Frog. <laughs> the bounty <laughs> hunter. Uh, CD, you are paired randomly by ticket with your partner. You make your way out to the dance floor to your position, and you look up to see Lieutenant Fine. Oh, gate guy. The gate guy. What is he dressed up as? Uh, Lieutenant Fine's mask is like a crenellated castle wall over the top half of his face. It looks like it's made of real stone that he's wearing. And uh, his his outfit, he's not wearing a cape, uh, but he is wearing... CD has enough cape for everyone. <laughs> he is wearing a very fancy version of his Border Patrol uniform that has a sort of... It's got tails, like not an animal tail, but like tuxedo tails ooh, coming out of the jacket. Ooh, it's, now that speaks to me. I don't know about CD, but that speaks to me. <laughs> it's a it's haute couture border patrol uniform. Lieutenant finds some being username is actually gay guy. <laughs> gay guy. Gate guy. Sorry, oh, okay. gay guy. I was gonna say like just run right of the mill. It's me, gay guy. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who that is on Twitter. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. There's got to be someone. Yeah. Who, want, who, who wants to do the search? Well, then we tweeted them. Hey. You came hey up with our podcast. Augustus. Yeah. No, we're, who, is, uh, who is Augustus paired with? I know exactly who it is. Yeah, I, I think we, we got we to keep this angst train going. I think uh, Augustus ends up with General Griefer. Yeah, good, great. Oh, <laughs> you know. know, you didn't have to pick that person, but okay. I, I, I did, though. I did. <laughs> I just send out the telepathic message. Suicide pact right now? We just take the, all three of them? Take, take, take the whole party with us. They're on the list. Everyone is on the list. Okay, but my guy is last. And it's quick. <laughs> quick. All right. So you have, you have all been paired up with your dance partners. And the dance begins. I need a group action for dancing. Interesting. Would you call that an attune? I would not call that an attune. <laughs> I mean, I would say it's a literal sway. Oh, oh. Um, let's see. Well, let's see. This could be mm, scramble or skulk. Dancing with whiskey tango. It's definitely helm. <laughs> I would almost or, make an argument for a kind of sort since it is kind of like this, you know, ritualistic social thing as opposed to. I was going to say, yeah, actually, I could also see it as as maybe consort. Mm. You want to lead that consort? Good buddy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's consort what we consort. This is a risky position. Standard effect to do a good dance. Do we all roll or? You all roll consort. And Augustus will take a stress for each failure, which is so far one. Another three there. Good job, Slip. You're consistent. What can I say? I shoot for, I don't have a bell curve. I have a straight line. Mm -hmm. There's okay. No, I too got right. threes. What in the biscuits? Oh, all right. I have to take a one. Oh boy! Can we say Matt. that the can we say that the failure is that uh, my mask falls fine, off? Fine, that fine is completely in love with CD. Can that be the failure? <laughs> How would that be a failure? Because then CD is out for the count. Well, they're stuck with Mister Fine. Oh, I see. Not Mister Right. Um, so you are. 
lieutenant fine. Exactly. You're working on doing your dance uh, moves, but you've only had basically a few hours to rehearse. So as you are making your way hesitantly through the dance moves, it's not looking great. And your partners are beginning to grow suspicious of how little you seem to have practiced for this extremely important dance that is like, this is the event to show off your dance moves of the year. And to show off how coordinated you can all be and how how much of a singular unit you can make with all of your fellow, you know, law enforcement fans and officers. Um, so this suspicion is growing around you. I'm going to tick this clock here. But what if I pushed myself and made it look like we did great? You want to push yourself to yep. like the role? The role has happened. The role is the role. There are consequences that are happening. But I can if you wish to resist the consequences. OK, you want to change what they think about about you? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna test the waters here. I could be used eye dancing and sway a target's mind in the face of contradictory evidence, or right. I, I could just make a resistance roll. Yeah. So first off, the consequence of their suspicion, which is this clock that is in my head labeled discovery, is going to be ticked two times. Oh, that is the consequence that is happening here. Does anyone wish to resist that consequence, or are you gonna let that ride because it's it's only two out of six? That's fine. How would one resist it? How would I help? You tell me. This would probably be a uh, a resistance roll using, uh, I think, resolve. <sighs> but CD could push themselves to doctor and distract everyone by pretending that they have rolled their ankle and hurt it. Okay, you can absolutely do that as an action. So, all right, so the clock has been ticked and you say that your action to try and distract from this is to uh, act like you've rolled your ankle. Yes. Okay. So I think acting like you've rolled your ankle would normally be sway, uh, but you said you want to use your your doctor thing. Mm-hmm. To push myself. Okay. And to push to myself. To make it look, I, like, really yeah. authentic. Yeah, yeah. And um, p- to push oneself is to use the... To stress. To stress. Okay. Just making sure I had the number there. Okay. So you're still in a uh, risky position at the moment because your consequence was two ticks on that clock. Yeah. And but- I think this will be great effect if you can really pull it off. <gasps> That's a six! Okay. <laughs> So the suspicion doesn't grow any further at the moment, but uh, now all attention is on because you have rolled your ankle very convincingly. What is? Uh, I'm not going to ask you to describe that. That's not fun <laughs> to think about. No. But um, so you're making a big scene. Yeah. Like. Oh my goodness! My ankle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! It's so unfortunate. Uh, as you fall Who towards the ground, this would happen on the most important night of all nights. Uh, I think the the music uh, continues, and a lot of the dancing continues. But as you tumble towards the ground on your rolled ankle, uh, Lieutenant Fine catches and cradles you, oh. so that you don't fall and hit your head as well. It's <laughs> not necessarily a ro- it's not necessarily a romantic thing. <laughs> it's absolutely, he romantic. catches and, and cradles you and is like, "Oh no, are you okay? What happened?" Oh, it was my ankle it kind of i don't rolled. know <laughs> oh a rolled ankle i know all about those i rolled my ankle once chasing down a refugee he says a, a what a refugee you know from the outer from the outer no, layers no, slip's not there no i know i was yeah, clarifying yeah, for michael yeah 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 uh-huh uh-huh here oh uh, my lean, lean on me I'll, I'll get you to the to the first aid station how very kind and valiant so they, they take you out towards the first aid station. Uh, your discovery clock does not tick any further at this point because of Thank your success. <laughs> uh, but your dancing is still not particularly impressive at this point. Rolled ankle or not, we stink. Do you want to try and get anything out of these people with whom you are dancing? Yes. Tell me what that's like. So I think that distraction over with or being dealt with uh, in the background slip um, during the slower part of the of the ballroom dance, whatever it is, uh, Slip leans in to, to Whiskey Tango. So, important night. Bit nervous? I am. I only feel nerves. <laughs> <laughs> He's just falling asleep. Poor guy. Oh, no. <laughs> Poor baby. Whiskey Tango is cannot. He's like, he's, he's, it's too loud. Yeah, he's like, what I the heck, I only feel Dad? nerves. 
<laughs> I only feel nerves when I'm on the trail of a dissident citizen. That's what I find so inspiring about you, Mr. Tango. Thank you. Many people feel the same way about me. <laughs> God, you're like a brick wall. Get an uh, autograph. I don't want an autograph. <laughs> I want his blood. But then you can burn it at, with an effigy of him. Oh. Own something of the person. Right. So, uh, you here in an official capacity? Just having fun. Everywhere I go, I am an official of the Section Blue. There he is. It is my sworn duty to provide a face to the citizens so that they can know that they are being safe by men of high quality, such as myself. It must be lonely sometime at the top. He has a distant look in his eyes that you can see through his mask for a moment. And he says, no, I have many friends. Friends are one thing, but I like shimmy my shoulders slightly. What about someone else? Uh, he looks briefly confused. Do you want to do a roll here? A sway of some sort, perhaps? Absolutely. This will be risky uh, with standard effect. This was a uh, sway, you said? Sway. Are you swaying while swaying? Uh, no, um, common misconception, I'm shimmying while swaying. Mm. An important distinction. Oh my okay. god, a six. You did indeed get a six there. Uh, he says, it is true that my duties often keep me away from deeper connections with people, citizen. In fact, the duties that bring me here tonight are not solely to act as the face of Section Blue, but in fact to protect something that is important to my organization. And indeed, he turns and looks at the camera. You can see that he is glancing, not at the camera, you can see that he is glancing towards a specific door in the back of the ballroom before he catches himself and looks back at you. There's just the briefest tell, but you notice that. Uh, he looks back at you and says, but that is unimportant to this evening. Allow me to assist you with the steps of this dance. It is important that we ensure uh, that we appear to be in lockstep, just as we are with the norms and laws of our society. Please. He begins to help you with the dance. But Augustus, is there anything that you're doing while this is happening? I think I'll also try to get uh, a feel for where, where the general's at. Okay. Tell me what that's like. I, I will start by excusing my missteps as uh, an old combat injury on the old legs. Yeah, those legs. Oh, you saw combat. I did not make it to actual combat. Uh, unfortunate training incident. Uh, as I'm sure you are aware, statistically in every batch of recruits, there are those incompetent. Uh, someone tried to lob a hand grenade overhand, somehow windmilled and nailed it to the ground. Although they took brunt of it, uh, so I caught some shrapnel in the leg. I'm sorry to hear that. They weren't able to grow you a new one? They did the best they could. But uh, as I'm sure you can imagine, uh, some of us worked our way up uh, and were had that extra challenge modifier. My father was a career soldier. Though he did not live to see wells, I hope to carry on through our munitions company. Ah, I see. Yes, a lot of us have worked our way up through the ranks, made our way in the face of intense difficulties and challenges. Why, I myself had a difficult time making myself respected in the military, coming as I do from a wealthy family. There's just not as much respect for that type of background. People often felt that I had to prove myself more, and I did. That's why I am where I am now. I think you and I are of one mind regarding that. The exuberance of this hall though lends its import to the gravitas of the circumstances and the situation. I think you and I both agree that demonstrating uh, our commitment to upholding the values of the sun through action is more important. All right. What kind of role is this you're doing? I think sway. I think I'm trying to build some camaraderie with the general. Okay. Go for it. You're still at risky standard. Uh, so I think, uh, do we have any gambits? We've got two. Sure do. You all mind if I spend one? Do it. I'll just try to create a buffer so he does not catch on to the grift, as Dustin would put it. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that the gambit do again, or how do I activate it? You just use one of the gambits and you roll with an extra die. Yep. Sweet. Okay. So the general says to you, I know what you mean. I feel that this, he gestures around with a look of distaste. The whole facility is just inadequate. It's not as defensible as it should be, given what's going on. And he pauses and says, uh, you know, the ball. That's the, that's the thing. Lots of law enforcement officials. People have got stuff against law enforcement. Gotta be secure. Um, and as he is saying this, um, the music stops. And there's a ripple moving out from a central point on the dance floor like waves of silence flowing outwards from a single figure that you turn and you see. Everybody is now staring and backing away from this avatar that has appeared in the middle of the dance floor. It is a completely silent avatar, and it is wrong. Different parts of it flicker at different frame rates, 
showing different features every few seconds. It moves sporadically as it sways back and forth, almost like a bird from pose to pose with nothing in between. No two body parts match from moment to moment. One arm juts out suddenly while the head appears to laugh. One leg walks in place while the other looks like it's climbing stairs. The whole mismatched body sort of flickers from space to space with no rhyme or reason. And it begins moving and appearing in different spots around the dance floor. And everywhere it appears, people give little yelps and back away and stumble. It's almost as if it were teleporting from place to place or as if the sim couldn't quite lock onto it. It touches someone on the dance floor just by accident and that person's avatar begins to fragment falling apart in digital bits floating up into the sky they scream people begin attempting to log out of the sim they can't slip you look within yourself and you can feel that this is not your doing and we're going to call it there for tonight what a twist evacuate the dance floor oh no (laughs) are you suggesting there's going to be a panic at a disco there may well be Okay, thank you for joining me tonight, folks. I know our good friend Slips Player has to go. It's true. So, uh, as soon as we can, we'll get back to this scene. But until then, I've been Matt. I've been joined by uh, OG Brown Sugar, Good Sir Blood, and Keekers. And we will see you again next time. Until then, all the best. All the best, folks. All the best, Space Squids. Space Squids. Space Squids. Space Squids. Space squids.